What's the worst food sin you've seen someone commit? I used to house share with a guy. We agreed to split the bill for the food essentials and buy anything different we wanted ourselves. Every time a sauce bottle got down to be being about one stroke three full he would fill it up with water and shake it before used to get my money's worth. I thought it was absolutely disgusting. We had an actual full blown row about it, which seems very silly looking back but anyone who's house shared before will know the small things tend to get amplified. That's just gross and stupid. It defeats the purpose of the sauce. That's not saving money. That's wasting a third of a bottle of freaking sauce. My wife will take a handful of raw macaroni and throw it into her mouth. And then pour in copious amounts of vinegar and chew it all together. Still grosses me out watching her. Not something I've seen. But my parents said when I was 4 I'd sneak into the Doritos. Lick all the powder off some chips. And put them back in the bag. When my parents would try to eat some, they'd suddenly be horrified by grabbing a cold and soggy chip. You just changed my stance on the death penalty. I didn't personally see it happen, but a guy my fiancé used to work with would wipe his chicken pieces with the lemon scented hand wipes from KFC thinking that they were meant for seasoning. Was on a flight last week. The lady sat next to me took the coffee mousse we had for dessert and spread it all over our side of garlic bread and proceeded to eat it in one. I don't think I was able to hide my look of sheer horror before she noticed it. Someone else in this thread mentioned their grandmother dipped her garlic bread in chocolate pudding. I'm gonna have to try it now. My co-worker likes to eat extremely strange food combinations. The worst I have seen was a slice of pepperoni pizza covered in slices of a California roll. He then covered the whole thing with a thick coating of nutritional yeast. I was with it until the yeast. My dad used to start the Thanksgiving turkey ridiculously early, like 9am, but we didn't eat till normal dinner time, like 5-6pm, so he'd take the delicious turkey out of the oven, toss it in the fridge for 5 hours, carve it at dinner time, pile it onto a platter, then stick the platter in the microwave. I usually slept in on Thanksgiving, so I didn't catch onto this abhorrent practice until I moved out and started coming over for Thanksgiving. I'm married with my own house now, so I host dinner now. Last year everyone was amazed at how moist my turkey was. Yeah, turns out not microwaving the crap out of it makes it taste pretty good. Who knew? When microwaves first hit the market, in the 1970s, there was such a novelty that everything got nuked. My dad would come out of the rain and nuke his socks to dry them out, at the same time as a cup of soup. On behalf of my wife, I tell this story about myself. I once had a really sore mouth and couldn't chew food. My wife made spaghetti bolognese and I told her I still couldn't eat, so she just ate alone and put the rest in the fridge. I was so hungry from not eating properly for a couple of days though, so later I put it in a blender and drank cold spaghetti bolognese smoothie. She almost threw up watching it but it was actually okay. My roommate puts apple sauce on anything. Tacos, fish, spaghetti, steak, burgers. He will literally put it into a bowl of apple sauce. It's horrifying. Only normal food thing that's okay to eat with apple sauce is pork chops. We were staying at my mom's friend's house. She offered us Cheerios and brings out apple juice and poured it in the bowl with the cereal. My mom and I looked at each other and knew telepathically we were in the presence of something evil. My brother used to put apple juice on his Apple Jack cereal. There was a crazy old lady named Lala who was a server for 10 plus years at a restaurant that I used to bartend at. Super nice lady, but she always smelled like cat pee and was generally unhygienic and gross to be around. Customers loved her though, so management kept her around. In a hoe, instead of scraping guests food scraps into the garbage, she would fill carry out boxes with the scraps. She saved dang near everything. I'm talking half a tomato slice, crusty old fries, a single bite of a burger. She would just throw it all in a box. Then, at the end of her shift, she would mix it all together and eat it like a salad. Feeling nauseated just typing this. Grossest crap I've ever seen in my life. Jokes on you, her immune system must be like Fort Knox. 
My ex-wife would refuse to eat a meal unless it was served piping hot. She also would refuse to come to the table to eat unless the food was already sitting there waiting for her. In fact, she wouldn't begin her come to the table routine, which included winding up whatever she was doing, going to wash her hands, and so forth, unless the food was already on the table. Even if I gave her several warnings that she should start getting ready because the food would be ready soon. So given these two delightful qualities, at dang near every meal we ever had she would sit down, take a bite, pronounce the food too cool for her liking, and get up and microwave the crap out of it. Didn't matter what was on the menu, a dish with a delicate cream sauce, an expensive cut of steak, sorted fish, whatever into the microwave it went. There's a guy in my flat at university, and all his meals, not too sure about breakfast, but I wouldn't be surprised if this was also the case, are all chicken nuggets and microwave rice. Other times he will mix it up by making hot dogs and noodles, but that's all I've ever seen this guy eat. Somehow this sustains him. He's a lanky guy, but he looks like death warmed up. Gaunt facial features, ghostly complexion. I know a diet like that would make me very ill, but I can hardly understand how this guy can just survive on that. My co-workers eats a crap load of ketchup with pizza, even though it's tomato based. It's just shocking to see that much ketchup with pizza. We're talking, a full scoop dip before every bite. My aunt, in her childhood, would lick the salt off of her Wendy's fries when the family went out to eat. My grandpa would be horrified with her for not eating perfectly good fries, and would eat them himself, not knowing she had licked each one. So basically my grandma and aunt let him believe Wendy's just had the worst, soggiest fries in the world for years before he caught her in the act. This sent a shiver through my bones. Have an upvote. I was kicked off a 1500 member foodies distribution list for this one. My friend managed the list at a large SF Bay Area company. I worked a few cubicles down. Someone started a thread on how do you dress up your ramen these folks were hardcore about their ramen. People would set aside a day to get in line at 11am for work lunch at the best ramen places. The thread had dozens of responses and I learned the name of a few new vegetables. I responded to the thread with I put a half packet of splendor in my cup noodle to offset the salt. I was trolling a bit, but it was something I actually did at the time. My friend calls out Bender. Can you come here a second made me watch as he removed my name from the foodies list. Now I'm curious. When my daughter was a toddler she was a super picky eater. Finally, we figured out she'd eat pretty much anything if she could dip it in something else ketchup, mustard, yogurt, etc. She's mostly outgrown it but somehow morphed into dipping garlic bread into strawberry yogurt. It's the weirdest and grossest combo I can think of that won't make you sick. I'm a waitress, I've seen it all, literally everything, and I don't judge. But this one time, order starts out simple 3 egg soft scramble, add spinach and goat cheese, and fresh strawberries, scrambled, in the eggs. They turned this grey brown color, she ate every bite. All of that makes sense just not as an omelette, spinach salad with goat cheese, strawberries and boiled eggs sounds great you could even throw bacon into both. Just don't put strawberries in scrambled eggs, leave them fresh on the side. My mum puts yogurt on her pizza, and I heard this was normal but my boyfriend will take a whole spoonful of peanut butter and dip it in milk as if it was an Oreo and milk. He just sucks on the peanut butter with the milk for a good hour till both the milk and peanut butter are gone. Plain yogurt is fine if a little unusual. Lots of savory food is served with yogurt. My ex stepdad would eat anything, like, open a Knopf store brand beef stew and eat it with a fork. I saw him fill a mixing bowl with rainbow sherbet, then pour two cans of cherry soda over it up to the brim and eat it like soup. Another thing he liked to do was put a stick of butter, a scoop of brown sugar, a scoop of regular sugar, a glob of caro syrup and a chunk of peanut butter in the microwave and just eat it. Like he was making cookie dough but didn't want to bother. The worst thing happened one night when my sister was visiting. She had made a crock pot chicken dish and it was quite good. At one point everyone had gotten up except me and my stepfather, so I was the only witness to this atrocity. Suddenly, he stopped eating and reached in his mouth, pulling out a wad of long hair and chicken bits. My first reaction was sympathy. Having hair in your food is terrible and I felt bad it had happened to him. 
But then he looked at the small, chewed bits of chicken tangled up in the hair, and began to suck them off the wad, just slurping away at it and sucking, I couldn't run out of the room fast enough. Had some family round for roast dinner, we had a really nice bit of beef that was still a bit bloody, probably rare to medium rare, my uncle decides it's not cooked enough for him so he microwaves his piece until it's well done and then covers the whole thing in a one stroke two inch layer of horseradish. I love horseradish with roast beef but not that much. A little late to the party, but I gave two sins. A friend of mine would take two pop tits and a chicken patty and make a sandwich out of them. This is the same guy who once put salt on cardboard and pronounced it was basically a stale chip. My mom eats her food very weird and it pisses me off. She picks apart her food and eats the ingredients separately. For example, pizza she rips the cheese off in sausage pieces. She then eats the cheese, breading of the pizza and sausages individually. Another example is a sliced beef sandwich. She'll eat all the beef and then the bread individually. IT supposed to be eating together. That's what makes it taste good. Really bothers me lol. This type of behavior is common among people who are on the autism spectrum. Look up autism spectrum food selectivity for more details. Aspic. You like jello? Cool. You like jello with fruit A. Eh? Crunchy but cool. Jello with veggies okay I guess. How about I mix gelatin in your spaghetti? You like flavorless jello with ham in it? MMMMH um nothing says good morning like a freaking tube of egg jello. So while I was growing up my family had lots of get togethers where my grandparents on my dad's side would host and cook. She cooked all sorts of things and most things were ready before we arrived. She just kept them in the oven to make sure they were warm by the time we arrived. Everyone raved about my grandma's famous cheese and potato scallops. And I admit, they were really freaking good. Super creamy, perfectly cut potato slices and seasoned to perfection. They were amazing and we all looked forward to grandma's famous cheese and potato scallops. Then one day, for some reason, I had to stay with my grandma all day and hang out with her while the rest of my family did their crap. We were having dinner later that night, so we went to the grocery store getting all the ingredients. She picks out a box and I see it and I tease the freaking scalloped potatoes the whole family thought was her recipe. There was no recipe, it was just instant crap that she's bought for the last 50 years pawning off as her own somehow. Just add some water and put it in the oven bada bing bada boom and done. It was always done before anyone arrived and she never told anyone in my family. For like half a century and somehow nobody in my family figured it out. I don't even think my grandpa knew. That was pretty sinful even for my young brain at the time. One of my fraternity alumni came by the house with a 20 year old scotch and some cigars. He lights up a cigar, pours a glass, and says take a puff of this and follow it with a scotch. The smokiness of the cigar complements the scotch perfectly. Whip wants to try someone steps up, takes a puff, and downs the glass like a shot. Yeah that was pretty good. The alum just stands there with his mouth agape and says I, I'm not even mad. I've never seen anybody do that before. He then made it clear that it was meant for sipping, not shooting. It was the greatest night of my life. I had been invited to the captain's table. I had only been with the company 14 years. Six officers and me. They called me Arnold we had gazpacho soup for starters. I didn't know that gazpacho soup was meant to be served cold. I called over the chef and told him to take it away and bring it back hot. So he did. The looks on their faces still haunt me today. I thought they were laughing at the chef. When all the time they were laughing at me as I ate my piping hot gazpacho soup. I never ate at the captain's table again. That was the end of my career. If only they'd mentioned it in basic training. Instead of having us climbing up and down ropes and crawling on your elbows through tunnels. If only just once they would have mentioned that gazpacho soup was served cold, I would have been an admiral by now. Instead of a nothing, which is what I am. Let's face it, I never got off the bottom rung. And do you know why? It's because I didn't have the right Nabi parents. I'll bet Todd Hunter was fed gazpacho soup as soon as he was on solids. No, I'll bet he was breastfed on it. One side gazpacho soup, the other side freely dispensed chilled champagne. Arnold J. Rimmer. I didn't expect to see this here but I appreciate it every time I see gazpacho soup mentioned now. Not sure that this is quite a food sin, 
but it certainly grosses me out to this day. My ex-girlfriend once made a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, replacing the bread with two fried eggs. And this is why she's your ex. My mom puts rotisserie chicken in the food processor, mixes cheese in it, and fills a corn tortilla with the ground up chicken cheese mixture. No seasoning. That is what she calls chicken enchiladas and honestly, it is such a slap in the face to Mexican food. A woman my uncle used to date was plucked straight out of China. Went out to eat with some family only have to witness the horror of her eating a cheeseburger. She started with the top bun, then the onion, then tomato, then lettuce. By the time she got to the meat of the burger, she was full. What the frick? My mother-in-law doesn't like to use napkins even when there are plenty. Instead, after every few bites, she will loudly and slowly lick each individual finger. The slurping and popping noises drive me nuts. Plus, she has asthma and eats fast. So it's chomp chomp chomp, huff, gasp, lick, 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 lick. I used to work in a fancy steakhouse. One night we had prime waja beef as a special. This is a $100 piece of meat. My job was to run the food out to the tables. And halfway through the night an order came back for well done waja. If you ask any chef they are going to say this breaks their heart. But people can order steaks how they like if they are the ones spending the money. When I run the steak out to the table the old man cuts into the center. And says it needs to be cooked longer. We repeat this two more times until there is essentially a $100 piece of jerky in front of him. The old man then asks me for some ketchup and I had to watch him smother his $100 wajau jerky in Heinz. The chef almost hit up when I told him. To each his own I guess. I visibly cringed. My girlfriend skins the cheese off her pizza. It hurts me a little every time I see it. On the plus side though I get double cheese anytime I want. My wife does this but she eats the cheese and leaves the worthless naked crust. I'm way too late but here is my culinary claim to fame. I can't cook unless I have clear instructions. It's not that I'm unable I just don't know what I'm doing. Give me a recipe and watch me go. Otherwise get out of the way. Way out. Like in another house. One day I tried to cook scallops. I have never cooked them. Nor have I ever seen it done. Firstly. They were frozen scallops. Not a good start. My thought was, you bake fish sticks and they are frozen. I'll bake these too. So I set the oven. Put the scallops on a baking sheet and now we wait. If I remember correctly I did put some johnnies on it. About 20 minutes later I took them out and tried one. It was the consistency of a hard artist eraser. Well frick me. So I think, how can I say this? It's what I planned for dinner. Then I thought, sauce might work. So I look in my cupboards and I find nothing. Then I remembered I bought some enchilada sauce for burritos and I could use it now and buy more later. So I quickly grab the can and go for the opener. Open open open. Pour and plop. It wasn't until that exact moment that I realized I had not grabbed the enchilada sauce can. I had grabbed the refried beans. In my defense, they were the same brand. I stared morose at the abomination I had created. At that exact moment my brother came into the kitchen to see what I was doing. Looked at my mess and fell over laughing. It turns out all you do is put scallops in a pan with butter and make them hot. That's it. I learned this in fits and starts between gales of laughter. TL. Doctor I baked scallops into lego tires and then tried to save them with cold refried beans. 1 stroke 10 do not recommend. In-laws. Rural Canada. Values hot food above all. Pasta night, dinner at 6, put on hot water at 5, throw pasta in whenever it boils, it boils for however long the package says to boil for, turn heat to low and it stays in the pot of hot water until it's time to come to the table at 6 and start eating, vegetables are steamed until they are practically mush, broccoli starts to smell sulfur y and is grey green, vegetables grown in the garden are not picked until they are jimingus and seds are fully formed mature. Cucumber sets. Ick. Not tender. Someone I work with inspired this post. I love Aureus. Like, buy a pack and it's gone that day a lot. One day I saw one of my co-workers open an Oreo, scrape the cream into the freaking garbage, and just eat the cookies. Because it's too sweet for her. I almost called 911. A part of me died inside that day, knowing such evil exists. Disgusting. 
Every year for Christmas, my dad cooks a horseradish crusted prime rib roast. He's been doing it for decades. He's got it to the point of medium rare perfection. Whenever my mom's family visits, they proceed to microwave it until it's grey, and cover it with A1. I cry a little inside. Once saw a guy in an Athens McDonald's pour the lettuce that had fallen out of his Big Mac into his McFlurry and then mix it up and eat it. Quite a few people were giving him some very funny looks. I made steak for my nephew's birthday. I went to Costco and got some nice New York Stip steaks and ice use vided them to a beautiful medium rare. My dipshit brother-in-law who no one likes piled his plate sky high and then put it in the microwave. This isn't as bad as a lot in this thread but it still grossed me out. X and I had a huge garden but had only managed to produce one watermelon out of the plants we had. I went out one morning to check on things and an animal had gotten to the melon. Chewing off about half of it, I picked it and tossed it in the alley dumpster. X got home and I told him about it. He got super mad that I had thrown it out, went out back, climbed in the dumpster, fished it out, cut off the chewed part and ate the rest. He didn't get rabies or die, so I guess he was right that it was still good. It was one of the many fights we had about me wasting food. I used to microwave scrambled eggs as a kid. My mom was disabled and didn't cook for us so she taught us to cook as much as possible in the microwave. I just thought that how you always made them. I still do this for a quick breakfast sandwich. Had an insane temporary housemate. We were both in a transitionary state of in lives. If I cooked and had extra she would have some. No big whoop. I am Italian American and don't understand portion control so I make vats of food. She, under her own gumption, decides to make dinner one night just for the two of us. I am immediately confused. There is nothing in that fridge worth making dinner over. This I know. I look to the counter and she's got out a couple half jars of salsa from a recent party, a bottle of ketchup, and a jar of olives. What are you making I ask knowing I'm going to hate the answer. Lasagna. I talk to your fiance I know you love lasagna so I'm making us some. Couple things. I know for a fact she did not talk to my fiance. I know for a fact that I don't like lasagna. I know for a fact that you can't mix ketchup and salsa to make pasta sauce. It was at this moment I knew that the transition time in my life was over and I needed to go out of that house. And I knew that I had seen the worst thing ever attempted to be combined into a known food product. Final recipe. 3 half jars of salsa. 1 half bottle ketchup. 1 half jar salad olives. 1 half box elbow mac. Mix it all together. Bake it. And then throw the whole thing into the garbage. A proper lasagna has at least hard boiled eggs and salami. What? If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.